The Eastern Sierra is a land of incredible beauty, towering mountains, and strange, almost otherworldly formations. In today's video, we're exploring three geologic wonders that seem almost too bizarre to be real. The Devil's Post Pile, Mono Lake's haunting Tufa Towers, and the mysterious columns at Crowley Lake. Before we dive in, we want to share a quick note. This video presents the scientific explanations behind these formations based on research from organizations like the U.S. Geological Survey and the National Park Service. We understand that different perspectives exist, but in this video, we'll be approaching these wonders from an earth science and geology point of view. So if you want to know a little more about some of the fascinating and bizarre geology you can find along the Eastern Sierra, we have you covered. Now, let's begin our journey. Our first stop takes us near Mammoth Lakes, California, to a truly iconic natural structure, the Devil's Post Pile National Monument. This area is typically accessed during summer months via a mandatory shuttle bus from Mammoth Mountain Adventure Center. Access can be limited in shoulder seasons, so it's best to check the park's website before visiting. For us, we visited late in the season and were able to drive directly to the trailhead down a steep mountain road. The hike out to the columns was not too hard. I started my All Trails app and started clocking the route. I think we're dealing like with a mile and a half-ish or something like that, so not a big deal. And along the way, we enjoyed the mountain scenery. Look at that. Eventually, we came upon one of the strangest sights we've ever seen, a large group of fallen geometric columns. The shapes are so distinct, it's hard to believe that nature could create something like this. Oh my, I didn't even realize. They bend too, you see that? That is wild. See, so if like upright columns, and then as you go this way, it's like they bend and then they, they twist, and then you see the bottoms of the columns. About 100,000 years ago, a lava flow filled this valley. As the lava cooled slowly and uniformly, it contracted and cracked into remarkably symmetrical columns, a process known as columnar jointing. It naturally fractured into hexagonal shapes because hexagons are the most efficient, stable way to evenly distribute stress across a surface. This pattern minimizes energy during the cooling process, similar to how drying mud sometimes cracks into polygonal shapes, but here it happened in solid volcanic rock. Now, we're standing up top, the Devil's Post Pile. You see it? You see the hexagons? They're not all perfectly shaped. They've been weathered, I think, with time. Look at this. According to the National Park Service, the columns at Devil's Post Pile are unusually well formed because the lava was of a remarkably even composition and cooled under the right conditions. Later, during the last ice age, a glacier sculpted and exposed the columns, polishing their tops into the smooth surfaces we see today. And now you can travel to the top of the pile and make silly jokes about the devil. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six, six. Oh my God, he really did do this. Or play Indiana Jones while you ponder the wonders of nature. You know what it reminds me of? Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade, where he's in that room and he has to spell, I think, Jehovah, and he chooses a J instead of an I. I think because it's Latin, and the trap falls when he's trying to find the Holy Grail. At the end, it's like, I, oh, whatever, boom. <laughs> Our next location, about 30 miles north of Mammoth Lakes, we find one of California's oldest lakes, Mono Lake. Located near the town of Lee Vining, Mono Lake is easily accessible year-round, though winter can bring snow to the region. Mono Lake is a saline and alkaline lake because it has no natural outlet, 
water flows in from streams but only leaves through evaporation, causing salts and minerals to concentrate over thousands of years. The lake itself is ancient, estimated to have formed at least 760,000 years ago, making it one of the oldest continuous lakes in North America. What really sets Mono Lake apart are the surreal, spindly towers of hard material, known as tufa, that rise from its shores. This is such an alien looking landscape here. Wandering around here made us feel like we were fish in an aquarium. Tufa forms underwater when calcium-rich freshwater springs seep up from the lake bed and react with carbonate in Mono Lake salty alkaline waters. This chemical reaction creates calcium carbonate, limestone, which gradually builds the eerie towers. We like to think of them as petrified springs. Wow. These are some of the best tufa I've seen. Really long and skinny. That is so neat. We're surrounded by petrified springs. According to the Mono Lake Committee and the USGS, much of the tufa you see today was once hidden beneath the water's surface. In the 1940s, when water from Mono Lake's tributary streams was diverted to supply Los Angeles, the lake level dropped dramatically, exposing these bizarre formations to the world. Wandering around this dreamscape at the foot of the Grand Mountains of the Eastern Sierra can make you forget for a minute that you're on planet Earth. All right, honestly, this 150% exceeds my expectations. Um, I, I knew it would be pretty cool, but uh, this, this is way better than I thought it would be. So anytime you're in the area, make a quick stop at the shores of Mono Lake and experience the birds, the flies, and of course, the tufa. Tons and tons of tufa. Our last location is also found on the shores of a lake just south of Mammoth Lakes. Here you'll find Crowley Lake, a reservoir famous not only for fishing, but for a hidden geological marvel along its shoreline, the Crowley Lake Columns. To visit the columns, you'll typically need a high clearance vehicle, and you'll want to check conditions in advance. Access can vary depending on the lake level and recent weather. If you can't drive to the columns, you can also hike on foot, which we saw many people do. Just be warned though, the area is exposed with no shade, so bring plenty of water and sunscreen. We of course have our truck slim and found the drive to be quite simple. The only spot that might give some trouble is a steep location in the beginning, but we found its bark to be worse than the bite. I don't know, a sudden too bad slim makes us feel easy. <laughs> when you arrive at the end, look down to find the columns. Even if you drive, you'll have to walk down a steep sandy hill to access the beach where the columns are found. And once you descend and see these things, you'll have a hard time believing they're not man-made structures. All up and down the beach are these strange columns and small caves between them. I didn't realize you could walk back in here like this. To us, they look like the spinal cords of some long extinct reptilian creature. Reminds me very much that you know, when you go to Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park and you see the Ichthyosaur fossils and you see the spine, the spinal column, it's in disarray. Looks more like this. But that's what this reminds me of, is like an Ichthyosaur spine. Or perhaps even the world's biggest collection of unicorn horns. So what caused these hundreds of cylindrical columns to form in such orderly rows? The prevailing theory based on research from the USGS and University of California geologists, is that they formed in volcanic ash. Roughly 760,000 years ago, the massive Long Valley caldera eruption blanketed this region in deep layers of hot, compacted ash called tuff. Groundwater percolated through the hot ash and triggered chemical reactions that hardened vertical zones in the tuff pillars. Over time, Erosion exposed these hardened columns, revealing the strange formations we see today. And if you look here on the beach, you could see cylindrical rocks that I would have to imagine are former columns because they're kind of like pancakes stacked on one on top of each other. You see that? 
It's such a weird thing. Interestingly, researchers believe the even spacing of the columns might have been influenced by steam escaping through regular fracture patterns as the ash cooled and solidified. We admit, these are so utterly strange it's hard to understand how these natural forces could create such orderly things, but here they are for all to see. Just make sure while down here to take in some of the other views you'll get across the lake and towards the mountains. The strange landscape is also one of the most beautiful in the area. The Eastern Sierra never ceases to amaze, and these three geologic wonders are vivid reminders of the powerful natural forces that have shaped and continue to shape our planet. Whether it's cooling lava, ancient alkaline chemistry, or the remnants of cataclysmic eruptions, these formations invite us to marvel at the deep and fascinating history written into the land itself. If you enjoyed tagging along with us on today's geologic study, we have several long form videos that extend the exploration. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content like this, and tell a friend about the Cactus Atlas. Thanks for joining us on this journey through science, time, and stone. Until next time, happy exploring.